I can still remember playing Thief the Dark Project for the first time. Up until that point, my FPS gaming experience had involved little more than Doom and Quake clones, you know, Hexen, Terminator Skynet, and Dark Forces. Then this game came along and outright punished you unless you kept to the shadows, avoided detection, and carefully managed your resources. Short 5-10 to 10 minute levels that I blasted through with a shotgun or rocket launcher were replaced with large missions set over sprawling complexes that often took me days if not weeks to complete. The 3D stealth genre had arrived and one of its founding members was a likeable master thief named Garrett. After two fantastic sequels, the series stagnated for a decade until Eidos Montreal took a stab at rebooting it. Now whilst the reboot sure wasn't terrible, it sure wasn't that great either and it felt very little like a proper thief game. But that was alright, because the true Thief fans had found their calling in a mod that had long been in development called the Dark Mod, created by a team called Broken Glass Studios, initially revealed in 2009, until it was somewhat polished up and released in 2013 for Microsoft Windows, running on the Doom 3 engine. The first two games ran on something called the Dark Engine, which was pretty basic visually, but quite complex in the way it handled lighting. The third game, Deadly Shadows, ran on the Unreal 2 engine and still has some of the most gorgeous dynamic lighting in any single game, perhaps ever. The Dark Mod uses the Doom 3 engine and isn't an outright sequel or even a standalone game, but it's merely a total conversion for Doom 3 that allows the player to experience a bunch of fan-made missions readily available online, all of which capture the tone and gameplay from the first two games, something that was deemed lacking in the third game, Deadly Shadows. Now, I'm not going to waste time listing the mechanics and features of the original Thief games. I go well into depth on those in my original reviews, which you can watch on my channel. At its most basic form, though, I'll just say it's a series of games that favor stealth over combat, where you use your light gem at the bottom of the screen to conceal yourself in the shadows as you steal as much stuff as possible from mission to mission. The series has always had a very unique soundscape and some iconic factions that returned in all of the original three games. But look, I won't say more than that. What I will do now is talk about what I did and didn't like about the Dark Mod. Now, hands down, this is much more Looking Glass Studios Thief than it is Ion Storm Thief, if that makes sense. Now, that's a good thing if you're one of those people who thought that Deadly Shadows was a step backwards. The single greatest issue with this game is that, yes, it does perfectly capture what made the Looking Glass Studios games great, but it also brings along the antiquated design elements and adds its own brand of unrefinement due to it being a little more than a Doom 3 mod. Take this. Uh, uh. What I noticed most about this mod was the AI, which is often horrible at times, and this is largely because the guards are just far too alert. I know this sounds like a good thing, but there really needs to be a combination of intelligence and leniency to let the player not feel like they have to avoid every single enemy they come across. This was something the old games did quite well. You could generally move up behind someone undetected unless you were running or moving across a loud surface. But in the dark mod, it seems they're just so aware of their surroundings, you have to literally crawl right up behind them. And even then, I've had times where they've somehow detected me and gone into an alert status. You shouldn't be afraid to go near NPCs. I mean, you shouldn't be engaging them head on, obviously, but you're given a blackjack for a reason. And knocking guards out and dumping their bodies in a dark corner is a major component of the original games. I feel like they've kind of missed out on that here by giving the guards this superhuman level of situational awareness and peripheral vision and the at times random reactional AI. Now look, two things to mention, these issues don't always arise with every single mission, but they are quite common. And secondly, I don't think this is a fault of the modders. I really just think the Doom 3 engine just doesn't support the same type of guard behavior that we got in the Dark Engine, and as a result, it's never going to feel exactly the same. What also doesn't help is that the sound isn't directional like it was in the original games. Now, if you've played the older games, you'd know that when someone was nearby or heading your way, you could pretty much pinpoint what direction they were coming. And they often made you aware of their presence by, you know, coughing, clearing their throat, or even talking to themselves. Gold is gold. Don't matter if it's coming from Reuben or Sheriff Truitt. In the dark mod, there's none of that, and the sound engine is much more basic. Now, why is it that the old Thief games are still the only stealth games that have ever gotten the whole directional sound thing so spot on? Why has no one ever beat this in the last 20 or so years? I mean, seriously. The other major thing to take note of is that every single mission available for the mod is fan-made, and the level of quality and difficulty really does vary greatly between them. Some of them are great, and others not so much. I tend to avoid the more horror-based maps, because those were the theme I generally enjoyed the least from the old Thief games, and thankfully there's a lot more of the heist-based missions on offer. You know the ones I mean, like breaking into mansions, stealing from lords, that kind of thing, and they're generally pretty fun to play. There is a lot of good concepts here and there, and some of the missions I tried were absolutely terrifying in conception and execution, but then some of them do have lots of little issues with bugs and poor layouts that really lets them down. 
But I've got to admit though, even the ones I didn't like, I still have to admit that they really nailed the atmosphere that the series is known for. I mean, this is a labor of love for real fans of the Thief games, and it's kind of unabashed in the way that it's done little more than bring the game into a newer engine. But I do have to say, the Dark Mod achieves what it sets out to do. It's more of a vessel for map makers to engage with the community and share content that's closer to what Looking Glass Studios originally went for with the first two games. And some of the maps are quite hard, much harder than anything on offer in the original games. It's just a shame that the difficulty often comes from the unpredictability of the AI and the at times lackluster level design. I'll be honest though, I don't quite think the mod is all the way there yet. It's about 80% where it needs to be. I remember trying it what felt like a decade ago and it ran horribly and there wasn't much going on. Now it's a lot more stable and there's a few dozen missions to download, but it still does feel unfinished. I probably played through about a dozen or so of those fan-made missions and I'll come clean, I could only bring myself to finish about two or three of them for various reasons. Should you give it a go? Well, that's an easy question to answer, Sunny Jim. Are you a fan of the Dark Project, the Metal Age, and to a lesser extent, Deadly Shadows? If you even had to think about your answer or couldn't remember which game is which, then don't waste your time. This mod isn't meant for you. It's meant for people who were utterly disappointed with the recent games and felt they needed more of what made the old games so good. Personally, I didn't enjoy it. It's overly difficult for the sake of being overly difficult, and I don't feel that difficulty is often genuine and fair. There were a few good missions, I'll be honest, but as I said, out of like the dozen or so that I tried, I really only enjoyed about two or three of them, and that's not the best odds. But the people involved with the mod and its target demographic clearly love what's going on here, and that's something I just can't knock. <laughs> 